Welcome to the Magic DPS Role Actions Guide. Here I'm going to go into a newbie level, but in-depth look at each of the role actions Magic DPS have. All role actions should be treated like an extension of your skill set, being useful towards you and your party's survival. As a DPS, your goal is ultimately to do the most damage you can, but your role actions can support the party in a variety of ways. If nothing else, they're useful for keeping yourself alive in the overworld. There's only four of them, but have the most inconsistent compatibility of the bunch. Let's get started. Level 8 starts us with Addle. On a 90 second cooldown, this lowers the magic stats of the enemy by 10% for 10 seconds. This is going to be hard to use this early on, but as you level, it will become greater and greater of an important skill. Almost all raid-wide AoE damage in the game is magic-based. Very early levels, there's little to no raid-wide damage, but level 30 and beyond starts ramping up how much there is, even starting to add it into normal dungeon bosses. By 50, almost every boss will have some form of magical AoE you can use Addle on. Not quite so early is being generally needed on dungeon bosses. It certainly is helpful to Addle anytime you see raid-wide damage is coming up, but won't do a whole lot at this point. However, Heavensward Dungeons and beyond, the usefulness is much higher. It is especially useful in Extreme Trials and Raids, where damage is cranked up even further. Just be sure you put it on the boss, and not any additional enemies that may show up and not be doing raid wides. 10% may seem small, but the benefits add up quickly, especially since it's free to use. Help your party out and help them survive. Level 18 is the ever useful Swift Cast. On a 60 second cooldown, you are able to cast your next spell instantly. The absolute best use of Swift Cast is for Raise on Summoner. 8 seconds becomes 0 seconds, so emergencies are minimized in their length. Just hope it's not someone important who died, like the tank or healer. In general though, this is great for movement. Mages have to stand still to attack, since just about everything has cast times. Any instant cast moves you do have are often very weak by comparison, especially so for Black Mage. So anytime you need to move a little bit, swift cast and use a strong move. You often use swift cast in your normal rotation too, especially openers to make room for further weaving. And despite what you may think, this includes Red Mage. You might think Swift Cast is useless on Red Mage, but they make use of it too, both rotationally and for movement. Dual Cast doesn't solve all of your problems, so anytime you need to move, make sure to use a Swift Cast. Also to get free for Thunders and for Arrows without needing a Dual Cast. Lucid Dreaming is up next at level 24. On a 60 second recast, Lucid will regenerate your MP for 21 seconds at a potency of 50 per tick of regen. This translates to 500 MP per tick and a total of 3500 mana. Simply put, if you're missing a large chunk of MP, use this. Depending on your level and which mage you're playing, you're going to go through mana at a different rate. Low levels, around level 24, you may be have one expensive spell, but even then, Constantly spamming it can cause you to run out of MP. Generally speaking, as long as you use Lucid under 8000 mana, you should be fine to use it anytime. However, keep in mind time to kill and never use this between fights unless you die to something and have no MP at all. HP and MP regen outside of battle is massively increased, with MP being 600 per tick. That's essentially a permanent stronger lucid dreaming outside of combat. This is almost entirely useless on black mage though, but it is here for if you make a mistake that causes you to hit 0 MP and no elemental buff, or die. Outside of making mistakes, black mage will never use lucid. The other two mages, you'll be using this all the time to keep your mana reserves healthy. Pop it every time you can, and especially if you're starting to get low on mana. Finally, we end with Surecast at level 44. On a 120 second recast, 
you gain a 6 second immunity to having your spells interrupted by enemy attacks. You also nullify most knockback and draw in effects. To quickly get the interruption aspect out of the way, it's mostly just for solo content. You can also consider using it if the tank dies and enemies start attacking you instead, but otherwise it's not that useful. You'll be able to get about 3 attacks in for the duration of the skill buff, and as a summoner or red mage you can get a raise in, even almost if you have to slow cast as a summoner. The knockback and draw in effect is the important part. Knockback effects are very common, especially in trials and raids. Due to being a magical job, you need to stand still to do anything. So, in order to be able to safely cast and not be cast into the abyss from a knockback attack, you have to use Surecast. Let me also take a moment to reinforce the most part of the skill description. There are very few knockbacks that go through it, but when you run into one it becomes extremely apparent. In the current raid tier as of this video, a lot of knockback effects just completely go through Surecast. This could mean in future content, there will be a lot more enemy attacks that will push you back no matter what, but there's no way of knowing if Surecast will work until you try it. Just be prepared for it to fail, especially if the edge of the arena is a death pit. Thank you for watching my Magic DPS Roll Actions Guide. Hopefully this has demonstrated the importance of your roll actions. Be sure to ask any questions on anything you don't understand or may not have been covered. Make use as best you can all of your toolkit and support your allies as your enemies suffer. May the power of Ananidhogs lay waste to your enemies.